Let's take a quick look at some of the highlights of the new features in this release. Autocomplete for commands, system variables, and command aliases is now available when typing in the command line or dynamic input. Both the command name, in parentheses, and the command alias are displayed. Use your cursor or arrow keys to select the command or system variable from the list. To change the size of the toolset and status bar icons, select look and feel from application preferences and adjust the tool and status bar icon slider. The content palette makes it easy to insert blocks and hatches. You can simply double click or drag and drop them into the drawing. We added new group layer buttons at the bottom of the layer palette. To add or remove layers from the group, drag and drop them from the main layer list. Creating a layer group allows you to group similar layers together. You can make changes like locking, freezing, or setting the visibility of all the layers in the group with a single click. We added a few new visors to help make you more productive. Hatch options are now displayed in a visor similar to the block and text editor visors. You can preview changes made to the hatch pattern, angle, scale, and so on before saving the changes to the drawing. The Layouts and Page Setup visor has buttons to add a new viewport, edit the page setup, and print the current layout. This visor is automatically displayed in all layouts. We added a visor for externally referenced drawings. When you select an XREF in your drawing, the external reference visor is displayed with tools useful for working with XREFs, like Ref Edit, X Open, X Clip, and so on. With the new Batch Publish feature, you can print an entire set of drawings with a single command. Use the file list to add and remove files, or quickly add models and layouts from all open drawings. The Export Data dialog now supports PDF in addition to several other formats. We made many drafting enhancements as well. There are more multifunctional grips for lines and arcs, as well as dimensions and M leaders. Speaking of M leaders, now you have better control over the distance between the text and the frame. And if you're not using a frame, you can choose to extend the leader all the way to the text. If you use the M text background mask, you'll appreciate that it remembers your settings for fill color and border offset factor. With our fillet and chamfer preview, you can see how things turn out with different settings before you complete the command. We've improved join functionality so you can easily join different types of objects. We've also added a blend command, which lets you connect objects with spline curves. And again, you can preview the results before committing. We've also added previews for working with surfaces. For example, you can preview lofts, blends, and patches. We've added more powerful array functionality, including the ability to create an associative array on a path. The divide option makes it particularly easy to create an evenly spaced associative array. You can also create a simple linear array of independent objects with the copy command using the array option. Here you use fit to space the arrayed objects. Working in 3D, use the level option while creating an associative array to specify the number of items in the Z direction. To help you quickly adjust the coordinate system to suit your needs, we've added grips to the UCS icon. These are just a few of the new features in this release. Browse the welcome screen at autodesk.com for more information.